Is coronal leakage important? Is this Friday Questions topic of conversation? Hi folks, this is Ali Nassan. I'm sitting here on a beautiful summer evening on the Boston Common. Uh, and uh, I want to talk to you guys about the uh, topic of coronal leakage. Uh, first of all, what it is and then why is it so important. Coronal leakage uh, is the, um, um, is the is micro leakage that occurs between the restoration that follows endodontic therapy and uh, the tooth. So uh, following root canal therapy, the tooth has to be restored coronally with a core buildup and a crown. And the quality of that restoration is significantly important about the long-term outcome of endodontic therapy. If the crown doesn't fully close uh, a gap uh, that may exist between the restoration and the tooth, you may get what's called microleakage, which is the leakage of bacteria from the saliva and the cravicular fluids uh, that will over time seep underneath the crown and reinfect the root canal filling. Now, what I found that a lot of patients have a difficult time understanding that, that uh, root canal fillings are not the same as the coronal restorations. Now, the restorations that are put in contact with the saliva are oftentimes uh, impervious. They're hard, such as amalgams and uh, other restorations, but the filling material inside the root canal is oftentimes not quite as uh, impervious. And uh, contamination of that area with uh, microbes can potentially lead to uh, leakage of the material through the root canal filling or around the root canal filling and so that it can find its way back down at the apex causing uh, a periapical infection again. Now, two classical studies have shown and demonstrated the importance of coronal leakage. And the first one was uh, by Dr. Trope, where uh, the importance of the quality of the root canal versus the quality of the restoration that ensues the root canal therapy were compared in a uh, quarter population to see of the endodontic failures which one of the factors was most important. Now they found that the highest success rate was logically found in cases in which root canal therapy was of the highest quality and the restoration that ensued was of the highest quality and they found also that the worst success rate was found in teeth in which the endodontic therapy was of the poorest quality and so was the restoration that ensued. Uh, but in, in between, there were left two groups. One was a good quality restoration and poor root canal therapy, and good root canal therapy and poor restoration. And what they found, to everyone's surprise, was that a better quality restoration fared better in the long run than just a better quality root canal. And this was later on, later on in another study that was done at Loma Linda with Dr. Turabinejad, it was also confirmed what, where what they did is they c compared a number of different um, techniques for obturation, including lateral and vertical condensation. And they had these extracted teeth that were sterilized and obturated with these two specific techniques. And then uh, through a series of uh, uh, a number of days, they added uh, bacteria coronally into the access opening that wasn't restored to see how long did it take for the bacteria to work its way down to the apex and cause uh, you know, an apical infection or in this particular case, because it was a study that was done in vitro, uh, turbidity in the uh, sterile auger uh, that was uh, the teeth were suspended in. So basically, they wanted to see how long does it take when you add bacteria on top of the tooth in the axis opening when you have exposed gutta percha and sealer before the entire canal was contaminated. And they found that invariably, whether lateral or vertical condensation were used, that all cases were um, contaminated completely all the way down to the apex within 30 days. So that has become really the basis for our uh, uh, recognition of the fact that teeth have to be uh, you know, restored immediately following root canal therapy and that uh, uh, coronal leakage should be um, uh, you know, curtailed and uh, kind of confined to the extent possible. Now, uh, this contamination that can occur even after the final restoration has been placed if the final restoration is not of good quality. Now, for me as an endodontist, I don't have any control over the quality of the restoration that follows my root canal therapy. But for those of you who are sort of dentists who also do root canal therapy, you have to understand that 
a majority of the success in the long run. In the short run, the success is dependent on the quality of root canal therapy. But in the long run, the success rate is dependent on the quality of the coronal restoration that prevents coronal leakage and therefore maintains the sterility of the root canal in the long run. And that's something that I'd like to emphasize over and over because many people, uh, you know, when you see a root canal that fails in the long run, you look at an x-ray and you see there's an infection, you say, well, the root canal failed. Usually root canals would not fail uh, in the long run unless there is a reason because the bacteria kind of got into, into that tooth for a reason. And usually um, it is due to, uh, if it's many years down the line, it's due to coronal leakage. If the restoration has lost its seal, then you're going to end up getting recontamination uh, of the root canal uh, material through micro leakage of bacteria. Don't forget again, the crown doesn't have to be open so that you can put the, uh, you know, the, you can put a spoon underneath it. Uh, it all it has to be open to is to has, it has to be open to greater than a uh, 20 micron kind of a uh, depth where you can get adequate um, bacterial leakage that could cause contamination. Now, uh, another reason this becomes a problem is that previously when we were using sealers, sealers would resorb out of the root canal in the long run. Now, when a sealer resorbs out of the root canal, then if you have that in combination with coronal leakage, you will end up having the ability of the bacteria to find its way down to the end of the root. So it's important to make sure that your sealers are non-resorbable, and um, I, for that regard, I also wanted to just share with you a case that I just ran into uh, recently, uh, a tooth that I had treated myself uh, several years ago. This is a mandibular second molar that was root canal treated uh, several years ago. And uh, the patient was supposed to restore the tooth following extraction of the wisdom tooth. And uh, the patient apparently failed to do that. So he came back to see me two years later and said, well, uh, what was it that I was supposed to do again? And uh, uh, obviously at this point it was too late. The tooth was destroyed, all decayed out. Uh, there was no restoration that was placed after the root canal was done. And so the tooth had to be extracted. But I just wanted to kind of bring to your attention that something that was interesting that I noticed. And what it was is that Despite the fact that the coronal area of the tooth had completely decayed out, the apical lesion that was present at the time of the root canal therapy had healed two years later uh, following um, the root canal, despite the fact that the tooth was not restored. And uh, this was a tooth that was restored with the hydraulic condensation. And, uh, you know, the hydraulic condensation, as you know, using the bioceramics allows you to have um, some bonded qualities into your uh, seal and this could be and of course this is not quite tested scientifically yet and this is an anecdotal uh, kind of an evidence but you may have seen some of these uh, cases that were also discussed by our other faculty here Alex Flory that the use of bioceramics and the bonding adhesive endodontics can potentially uh, help reduce coronal leakage of course this has to be shown but I just wanted to share with you this case and also emphasize to all of you doing endodontic therapy and restoring your teeth yourself uh, to make sure that you heed as much to the quality of your uh, restoration that ensues the root canal therapy as you do to your length control and the quality of the pack and everything that you do and one of the uh, basic things that you can do for checking the quality of your restoration is to make sure that following uh, fitting of your crowns uh, that you also take a um, a bite wing radiograph so that you can check the quality of the fit of the restoration to the tooth uh, as well as checking it with your explorer and uh, and the floss and so on and so forth anyway this was just a quick tutorial for this friday question uh, session emphasizing the importance of um, um, of maintaining a good coronal seal for the long-term success of your teeth. For Rebel Dendo, I'm Ali Nese, and I hope you found this information helpful.